For 38 years, I suffered from tremendous amount of bone pain, joint pain, skin pain, back pain, pain all over my body. And I kept going to doctor after doctor after doctor, year after year after year. As I continued to decline, I started to notice that my ALP levels continued to go lower and lower and lower and lower to the point where they weren't even traceable in 2018. And I discovered I had the genetic mutated gene that caused hypophosphatasia, which was an incredible diagnosis because it opened up an entire world I didn't know existed as far as an explanation as to why I had suffered so greatly. But it's also been really, really difficult because you have to navigate an entire medical system who has no idea about what this disease does on the body. My husband and I are high school sweethearts and I remember discussing his diagnosis pretty early on. He told me that it was prompted by very early tooth loss. He was able to pull his teeth out with very little to no pain or bleeding associated with it. This was uh, what prompted him to be evaluated by a dentist who noticed an abnormality but didn't know what exactly it was. So then he was referred to Shriners Hospital in St. Louis. My brother is 13 years old. Uh, he started walking late in his infancy compared to his peers. That's why uh, we took him to the doctor. Uh, doctors diagnosed a muscle disease, which called lipidopomyopathy. But this diagnosis was wrong. Uh, he took wrong treatment for 12 years. Uh, my brother always said uh, his bones are constantly aching. Last year, he was given a simple blood test and his ILP enzyme was low. Uh, doctors found that he has hypophosphatase. Uh, being honest, I don't really remember being diagnosed because I was only 18 months old. But my mom told me that I couldn't walk, I couldn't crawl, so I had to scoot around and after after a couple of months, they took me to uh, to a hospital, and that's where I was diagnosed. My son had craniosynostosis operation when he was eight months old, and after the operation, while staying at the hospital, the doctors suspected from HPP because of the low ALP level, and after the genetic tests, it was for sure that he had HPP. We received Rowan's official HPP diagnosis after an amniocentesis when I was 24 weeks pregnant. Rowan showed shortening and curving in his long bones and extremities and was born with a low ALP and his official HPP diagnosis in February of 2020. Maddox was diagnosed with hypophosphatase at a week and a half old. He was quite a poorly baby. We all noticed that something wasn't quite right. Um, he struggled to feed, he required oxygen, they then thought he had a chest infection so we were sent for an x-ray, they were doing lots of blood tests and they found that his alkaline phosphatase result was low um, and they put two and two together, low bone density of low alkaline phosphatase and googled and came up with a probable diagnosis of HPP. Our initial concerns were brought up during her 20 week scan when we went in to see if we were having a boy or girl and they noticed that not only was she not growing at the right rate for her gestational age, but she was also having significant bowing in her long bones, which we thought was due to her having fractures within the womb. It wasn't until after she was born that we were able to get the confirmed diagnosis of hypophosphatasia after getting a blood draw done. So for, you know, about 19 to 20 weeks, we had this period of not knowing what was wrong with our baby and also just not knowing if she would even get to come home with us and be okay. There's like that fear of, okay, if she lives with this and something is wrong, like, will I be able to even change her diaper without hurting her? And there was just a lot of fear and anxiety that entire period. <laughs> 